Welcome to Quirky Creations, where we're going to be helping Maria, Daniel, and Sophie solve some of their problems. Let's dive right into our story, make our build, and then code our robot to accomplish some cool tasks. Daniel's locker is overflowing. He can't close it because it's so full. Daniel needs to clean out his locker. He wishes he had help carrying his things home. Build this robot helper for Daniel. It's going to help him carry his things. Here we have just a blue beam, and inside that blue beam, we are going to put four black pins. I really like this build because it's a totally different way to build a moving robot. It uses two motors, but it attaches them differently. We'll take one of those small blue two pieces and a purple slider brick, and you'll set the blue two piece on the front of the purple slider, slider brick, and then you'll attach it so that the blue piece is on the opposite end of the black pins. To hold it all together on top, we're gonna place one of these blue slope shape pieces, and this will stick those two together. We want the slope facing away from the black pins. Now here's where we attach our two motors. You wanna make sure that blue wheel that's going to turn are facing away from each other. And you're gonna plug them in to those bottom two holes on both sides. There's a view from the back. We're just trying to get the wires out of the way. And on the outside, the same side or on the back side, but closer to the blue part, the blue spinning part, we're gonna put two black pins. We're gonna move that out of the way and we're ready for a blue beam. On top of the blue beam, we're gonna put one of these flat green pieces. On the back side of that blue beam, but still under the green pieces, we're gonna put two orange pieces that have a single hole inside of them. Move that back to the side and we're gonna lay down two of these blue flat pieces, and then we're going to smash what we just built on top of them. You should be able to see the orange pieces facing the flat part. On the bottom, to help this move, we're going to place two purple slider pieces. Let's see what this looks like from the bottom. Pause your video at any time and make sure you match. Now, into that blue beam is gonna go the back side of our motors, where we just put those black pins and it'll look just like that. One side has that blue piece that's sloping, the other side has these two legs, and on the very bottom, we have three of those purple pieces. Let's get our wheels out, and we wanna use our big wheels in our Spike Essential Kit. We'll put two black pins into each wheel and attach them directly to our motor on the blue part that rotates. Gather up about four black pins, and in the very top of your motors, on the blue part, we're gonna put these four black pins. Two on each side, they're gonna go on both sides of your wires. You could start laying those wires off to the side, going down the middle of our black pins. We're gonna use two blue beams that are round all the way around, and attach them on top. They're gonna be guides for those wires. This one's a little tricky. Nice view of my arm. You'll see we have our two blue beams attached to the top. Now grab two more black pins and in that back blue beam, the one away from those two legs that are sticking out, closer to the side that has the blue slope piece, you're gonna put two black pins in the back. This is where your hub is gonna attach. Make sure the button and the light are facing forward or facing over those two legs that are facing out. And then on the back side, you're gonna plug in your motors. I see my motors plug in on the same side as that blue sloped piece. Onto the sides of our hub, we're gonna attach these two black pins. We're gonna use one of our long green tubes and two of these white axle pieces that have open rings on either side. 
you plug the axle piece directly into that blue tube or blue tube into the axle piece and then you can attach it onto your robot those little black pixel pins looked like ears at first but now our robot's starting to have some shape we're going to use these white axle and pin combo pieces to go into the front of our hub move that out of the way we're going to lay out our green flat piece a couple of orange circles and an orange cone and attach those together i wonder what this is going to be on our robot it's starting to look like something let's give this robot some eyes people think robots are friendlier when they have a friendly face so we'll take one of our round blue pieces and put an eyeball on top of it and attach that and our robot is pretty much done now let's build the things that go inside daniel's locker daniel's locker has looks like a cone a hockey stick a couple of red balls maybe even a dog oh get back here red ball And this robot was built for Daniel, so we need to get him out there. There's Daniel's wheelchair. He's got some constraints. He's not able to walk with those legs, and that's why he needs this helper bot to help carry things home from his locker. Here's our challenge. We're gonna create a program that controls the robot helper. I'm gonna show you two different ways that we can create these programs. One is gonna use word blocks, and then if you're brand new to Spike Essential, I'm gonna show you how you can access icon blocks as well to make this robot move. We need to start by connecting our hub to our computer. You've got a button right on top of this robot. If you press that button, it'll start to flash. Now on your screen, you're gonna press that yellow circle, find your robot on the screen and click on pair. You'll know this is working correctly when this light on your robot turns blue. Here's our helper robot, and here's Daniel. We've built models for the things that are gonna be in Daniel's locker. So I see Daniel has a hockey stick, he has a dog, a couple balls, a cone. You might be thinking, how on earth does Daniel have a dog in his locker? I was a principal for a while, and I had a student that would keep a rabbit in her locker and she would keep it in her sweatshirt so i'm not shocked that daniel has an animal in his locker now daniel needs some help to get all these items home the first thing we need to do is we need to test and see does this robot move correctly and now we're ready to tell our robot to move at 100 percent speed and to move forward for one second Let's click play and see if it drives forward. Perfect. This drove correctly. If my robot had gone backwards instead of forwards, that would have let me know I needed to switch my motor inputs. Let's say you're not ready for word blocks or you're running into a problem that you know you can solve in icon blocks. If I want to, I can click this home screen, go all the way home, new project, icon blocks, I'll hit create, and now I have icon blocks. But down here on the bottom, I'm missing those pink movement blocks. So I click that plus sign, I click movement, and then I hit the X. Now I can write this same program using icon blocks. Set speed to 100%, tell it to move forward one rotation. Awesome, it works just the same. Here's a map to help Daniel to get home. I see he has his school in blue and the flag in red. I see that Daniel's bot, if it starts up here at the school to match the picture, it's gonna drive forward and then it's going to hang a right. Daniel needs to drive forward quite a ways and then turn left and then drive forward a little bit and he'll be home. And we want this robot to carry all of Daniel's stuff while we go. So I'm going to set my robot so it's facing me, so it matches where that school is. And I can use icon blocks to do this easily because there is a right turn button. And then I want it to drive forward, let's say, three rotations. 
then I want it to turn left, and then I want it to go forward two rotations. Let's see if this follows Daniel home. So Daniel's gonna go forward, he's gonna turn right, he's gonna drive this way, he's gonna turn left, and then drive forward. Can your bot follow Daniel home? Oh no, we are losing all sorts of things. We made it home with a dog and a hockey stick. Along the way though, we lost these red marbles as well as this cone. How can you change your robot so that it carries all of these items without losing anything? Can you make some modifications to make this helper robot keep track of all of Daniel's things and drive them to the correct location? I'm gonna give you some ideas, and then I want you to build your own, or choose one if you don't have a kit that you think would work the best. Here are our options. We could put a board in the front, and it could carry Daniel. We could put a bigger platform. We could even build a wagon. Check out these builds, try to make an upgrade to your robot, and then program it to get Daniel Home. While you're building, I have some questions for us to discuss in order to start wrapping our minds around having this robot be a helper for our student Daniel. If you were in a classroom and your teacher said you had to empty the classroom in the shortest amount of time possible, how could you do that? Maybe you would open the door and just start running things out. Maybe you'd open the windows and start throwing things out. What if there was a catch? or a constraint? What if we said you only had 10 minutes to empty everything out of your classroom? How about another constraint? What if there were only four classmates who could help? Do you think you could empty your classroom or empty your house with just four people or in only 10 minutes? Those are some constraints. Those are things that are limiting our ability to do the job we're trying to do. Now it's our job as engineers to come up with a solution that takes in mind those constraints to accomplish the goal 